Seal hunt, Kai finds out how, why, and what they taste like. Salty chicken, perhaps? Simulated stalking, find some woodland, mix some shapes and test your mates. We've got a roebuck up here. He definitely can't hear us, because it's metal. <laughs> In news, we have big cat sightings, or do we? And we tempt you with the latest Field Sports Africa. In the meantime, it is Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Midnight sun after seals, grey seals. Here's some background. Grey seal shooting in Norway is licensed and heavily monitored. Only 60 animals can be taken in the season and you need to check before heading out to see if the quota has been reached. Potentially one shooter could take the whole lot. You need to use similar knockdown power as if you were shooting a red deer. Female greys weigh up to 200 kilos and males 300 kilos. Before heading out, Trigger hopes he's bagged some crabs down by the jetty. All we need now is to get some crabs, get those beers out, and have ourselves a really good evening. I've been travelling since 3am and I'm absolutely shattered, so I could do with a good meal. This nice cod. Oh, 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 get up on my friend. This is a nice young cod. Should be like five, six kilos. And then we catch it. So you, my friend, will come back to it. You're not gonna give it a kiss before it goes back? Yeah. Mm. Oh, lovely. Back among friends. So this one will be for dinner. It's a female, as you can see here on the shield. It's really wide. And this is a pity because some other fisherman he broke the arms off because at this time of year normally there's not much in the house of it. It's normally only food in the hands of it. And that means some fisherman breaks them off. It takes a lot of time then for the crab to feed themselves because these are changing these shields maybe three, four times during the summer and they need to fill up, eat and when they're maximum full, they're the best to eat. And there are a few ways you can check that. It's by the backside here, the strength of the shield and the color. And this one is like not full. And sadly, because someone took the clothes, his hands, the strong hands like that one, off. So this one will be the best one for us to eat today. But some of them will be something inside as well. And this one, this one, by the way, is the male. You see this, this is a very small thin compared to the females we just had with this big that's a female so during the autumn this one will be full of rowan and that's a delicacy but it's too early now so august september is best time for fishing crabs but they're still good to eat what you can see in there that should feed us for this evening i think don't you trigger i think it's uh, fantastic plenty enough for the two of us Maybe we'll have to invite some guests. I think we should. <laughs> this is not a pest control job. Seals are a resource to be managed and harvested for meat oil and fur. However, they can be a menace around a fish farm. Well, I've just been told there's 800,000 salmon out here just in, just in front of us, which is amazing. And it takes about 14 months from it to become about 100 grams to about five kilos to eat. So that's a, a lot of fish, so it's a, it's a big business here. So when, when they do have the seals come in from the outside, um, scaring the fish and damaging the nets, and this, it creates a big problem. So some of this does need to be controlled. 
Shooting from a boat or towards a bobbing target takes practice, so Trigger gets Kai to put some rounds through the Zawa in preparation. So now we're just going to do the target shooting, just to make sure that the rifle is correct, zeroed, and uh, that we can be able to shoot the seal in the head, as we very often do. And it's legal to shoot from a boat. You can't do that with anything else but the seal. So the sea need to be calm, the seal to be calm, and we to shoot straight. So that's why we're going to test the rifle now, as always, before going and stalking anything. But the easiest uh, case would be if they're on land. Because it's low tide now, it's a good chance they're on land, which makes it possible to shoot shoulder and a bigger target. So let's hope. We're going to be using Trigger's rifle today, which is a Sauer 202 and 308. Um, along that we're using the size Stiavari, the 3 by 12 by 56 a really good setup here. I've used it before and it works really well. Um, the rounds we're going to be using today are the Fusion 165 grain. It's hard to find them today, but uh, this is very important part of the seal stalking. With binoculars you need to spot them very often to the far distance, either laying on the land or they're in the sea, and then try to find a position. But the spotting is, uh, they might hours and hours, hours spotting, and even if you see them, they might be gone when you're there. <laughs> but at least you know where you're going to, to find something. They spot seals, but they are mainly the smaller harbour seals, which are not in season. Those give birth in May. Their quota for this region is 25 animals. There's a family of seals in front of us, probably about half a dozen. They're all harper seals. We were looking for a while now. And it's quite difficult to tell the difference sometimes, but obviously the grey seals are a lot bigger. But we're just watching them playing around in front of us. They're quite curious. We're just looking and just looking. But yeah, it's very important that you identify the right one because Harbour seals aren't in season and the grey seals are, and we don't want to do that mistake, so we've been very, very careful about the selection. The greys are being elusive, and with choppy seas, the only option is for Kai to roll the dice and set up on a small island. A possible 600 yard shot on a moving target is not on the cards today, and after this tricky moment, they decide that harbour seal meat from the freezer is the safer option. How long are you going to cook it for? Just a few minutes each side, let it rest. Okay, so a few That's minutes right. on each side, we're going to let it rest. It's the first time that I've ever tasted seal. And I'm really excited to try it. Trigger's tasted seal before. And this is why at 107, he is the figure he is now. Yeah. So here we are, Trigger's seal. He's seasoned with some salt, pepper and lime. And he is nice and medium rare, I would say which is, uh, according to Trigger, would have it any other way. We're just cutting thin slices for us to help ourselves to, along with some uh, cabbage, with a uh, celery, uh, seasoning, um, butter, and uh, creme fraiche. And we have some rabbit here with a homemade barbecue sauce. So again, we are eating very, very well here in Norway. Seal is uh, one of my favorite meats. It's, uh very dark, it's juicy. For more information about Shooter King clothing, go to shooterking.com and for more information about Zawa rifles, go to zawa.de. Thank you, Kai. And if you didn't see it on Facebook, here he is testing his new Shooter King waterproof trousers in Norwegian waters. 
And what else is Kai up to at the moment? Well, he's just launched a new training company called GameAndFlames.com and it promises to teach you how to hunt, shoot, skin, cook and dine on wild game under majestic chestnut trees and oak trees, he promises. Now, from the right pants to our current affairs commando, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The UK Game Fair at Stoneley is to be absorbed by the rival Game Fair at Ragley Hall. At the moment, there's no confirmation that the Game Fair at Ragley Hall, held the weekend after the Stoneley Game Fair on the last weekend of July, will honour or refund any UK Game Fair tickets or stands. An official statement will follow. In the meantime, we spoke to Stoneley organiser Wes Stanton. That's the way to do it. A man driving home from a pub in Devon has snapped what he believes to be a big cat. James Yulden took this picture near the village of Ottery. It follows a picture taken near Plymouth last year of another claimed big cat sighting. Brits voting to leave or remain in Europe can determine who will be in charge of hunting laws in the UK. Will it be pro-hunting British Environment Secretary Liz Truss, who has called for repeal of the ban on hunting with hounds? Or will it be pro-hunting European Environment Commissioner Carmenu Vela from EU member state Malta? We will find out on Friday. You can no longer shoot foxes in Luxembourg. The Luxembourg Environment Ministry has banned it and partially banned wild boar hunting. Following complaints by local fox shooters, a judicial review found that they were not able to show that the number of foxes in Luxembourg was limited by shooting. With a population of half a million, Luxembourg is about the same size as Northamptonshire. It's good news for Field Sports Channel viewer Ewan Earhart, who is the youngest winner of the Tam Todd Trophy. It is Countryside Learning Scotland's award for the young person who can demonstrate respect for the countryside, coupled with enthusiasm and dedication for their country sport or career. Ewan picks up his prize at the Schoon Palace Game Fair on the 22nd of July 2016. And finally, staff at an advertising company in London have lashed out at their heartless bosses for bringing in pest controllers to deal with a pesky squirrel. Squirrel rights enthusiast Anthony Coyne from the Think Doer advertising agency is leading the campaign to save the animal that he and fellow workers have named Cyril, which often comes into their office in search of nuts. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News, stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, when David was searching through the archive, he came across this film, the Roy Lupton Fox Calling with a Donner Kebab film from our archive. And you can click on the link on the screen to watch that classic. And we hope Roy will be back with us soon. In the meantime, let's see what you lot have been up to. It is Hello Charlie. Hello Charlie. It's Carsten from Jagdtotal in Germany. Got this Roebuck today morning with my new Sauer 404. It's a very small buck, but I'm really happy because he's got a broken leg. So, good hunting, good luck, and goodbye. Hello, Charlie. It's Eric. And Evan. Bruce from Ontario in Canada. We're out here on this lovely afternoon hunting groundhogs for a farmer. Hello, Charlie. Stephen Ollie here in sunny Somerset. Just out on the fallows this morning, just before we do a bit of tree cutting. Look what we got ourselves. That's it. Please send me your Hello Charlies via Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox, or email charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Thank you for those. Please keep them coming. Very impressive international crop this week. Now, before you go game shooting, you might go clay shooting. So before you go stalking, what are you going to do? Well, Paul Childerly has an idea. He explains why and what to do. So what we've got here, we've got a sort of simulated stalking area back through behind the range. We've got the range there. Uh, once you finish on the range, all zeroed up, you can, you can do it's like a simulated stalk. And it's not just about shooting, it's about obviously judging distances, identify the quarry, what you're after, 
angles that the deer are stood, whether it's a safe backstop, all these like safety things that you, you, you take for granted when you've been doing it for a little while, but it's, it's quite handy for the, for the novices or the beginners to um, just to do it like in the field, but not with live animals. So I recommend it to anybody. And also it's good to get used to the equipment, um, whether you're using sticks or um, off the bipod, or even a new gun. It's a great way to, to test the rifle and to really put it through its paces. Shots off the sticks, test the balance of the rifle, see what it's like prone as well on the bipod, see what the trigger pull's like under rapid fire, recycling. I mean, I've used a Seiko for a long time anyway, so to me, you know, it's second nature to use one, but also get it bedded in. A few shots and uh, get everything working together well. You can do it with, with paper targets, plywood, cut out targets with a jigsaw. Also, it's quite good because some of them are facing away, so you can't, you've got to get, get the angle correct to try and get a clearer shot. Also, got, it's quite good this time, you've got a lot of cover. You have to take, you know, maybe squat down a little bit and take a bit of a sort of awkward shot rather than the classic prone or the classic stick shot. You're perfect leaning into it. You know, it's not always like that when you're out in the field. Okay, we're going to go straight in here and do a simulated stalk down through. There are six animals and we can shoot five. Okay, the scenario is we got a suspended uh, fallow target and um, we shoot it. The target's obviously moving. Um, it's simulating a group of fallow. We're on a cull hunt. We need to get several animals on the floor. You strike it, you just make it spin a little bit. <laughs> Bang, shot. So it gives you a bit of, bit of something a little bit different. On two of them, actually the angle of the, the plate was slightly facing away. So again, that's why it was pushing in. I'm hitting them slightly further back um, because obviously got less angle at the front. So that one, I think that one. Um, so yeah, happy with that. Still a little bit low still, but uh, I'm happy, I'm happy. Okay, so woodland stalking personally, I quite like it on eight power, um, shooting off the sticks. Um, also, I want to get the red dot ready. So it's all up and ready, all focused and everything. I've had red dots the last decade and for woodland stalking, they're absolutely perfect, especially off the sticks. Just make sure you use the same ammo as you're going to go stalking. Stick with what you know. This is a classic one, really. So if you look at the targets from here, um, you've got Roebuck on the right, and it looks like a fallow doll on the left. Obviously, they won't be together in the wild, but this is what it is here. And you can test people, say, you know, we're in May, which one can you shoot? And they'll say, well, we can shoot the one on the right, which is the Roebuck, correct. So they'll get ready to shoot it. Um, but realistically, it's got too much brush in front of it. So, you know, then you stop them and say, well, you know, that's not really a correct shot because you've got too much brush and too much um, debris in the front which break up the bullet. So again, it's like makes them think, you know, think about what they're doing, not, not just see an animal. Yeah, it's a roebuck, it's safe, bang, shoot it. Think about, you know, what's in front of it, where's another deer behind it. Um, there's so many variables when you're out, out in the field. Um, it, is, it is really good. We've got a roebuck up here. He definitely can't hear us because it's metal. <laughs> what I tend to do is just drop the six against me gently, pull it down low, so hopefully there's a bit of cover up, through, and then I with the two sticks, I just split them open, put it on, get into position. One gold metal roebuck, <laughs> or one coal buck. <laughs> Good shot, heart shot, one roebuck on the deck. Thank you, Paul. And it looks like something you could do without a rifle too, a walk in the woods unwasted. And I hope David has still got his tombstone front teeth after Paul kicked that target at him, you bully childerly. David is a very fragile flower, you know. Now, from kickboxers who should pick on people their own size to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. <laughs> Oh,
This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Top chef Gordon Ramsay learns about fast food in this film, hunting, butchering and cooking wild boar. He's on a boar shoot outside Fort Benning in Georgia, USA. Another star on a hunting trip in the US is Melissa Bachman, who is heading out with good friend Alan Wade to hunt alligators in the swamps of Louisiana. And to round off a trio of American films, bear hunting in Washington on the Olympic Peninsula has two hunting reviewers road testing a trophy black bear hunting agency for Got Hunts.com, an online agency that helps you choose your sporting agent. A Simple Tale Simply Told is Tony Gillihan's latest from down under. It is April 2016 and he is after a Sam behind. Meanwhile, Hunting with Adventure Dan is a boat ride around New Zealand to get to the right place for hog hunting. This is just a trailer for a full film out next week. Traditional German hunting TV next, Sebastian Jakob is keen to shoot a yearling roebuck in the German state of Hesse in May. Meanwhile, Hakan Hakioglu is crow hunting in Cyprus. The birds look a bit less cunning than the ones we Brits are used to, but that's no criticism. I'm all for obedient pest species. And finally, Ricky Mills from the Wild Jaeger channel got married to Mina and he posted this wedding video. Ah, Congratulations, Ricky. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. If you don't like any of those, you simply have to watch the latest episode of our own Field Sports Africa. It is very cool. This time we go all buff. Buff for Buffalo and a buff American hunter, Aaron Nielsen. It's a heart-pounding hunt and we join him at the climax of five days after Cape Buffalo in Tanzania. We're also enjoying a safari by night sight as Rich explains the weird and wonderful nocturnal wildlife they have to manage to conserve pasture for their livestock. Click on the link on the screen. And the new Airheads is out, oven ready for every air gunner. This week our air gunning TV show goes out with Jamie Chandler who is torn between surfing and pigeon shooting. He chooses pigeons, meanwhile Roger Late has advice on parallax. There is hot air, there is air streaming. Click to watch it and that's it. If you haven't done so already, please go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube or pop your email address into our constant contact box on our register page and we'll constantly contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain at 7pm UK time, every Wednesday and all our other shows. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye.